What I want you to do is open Excel, go to New, and open a blank workbook. I want you to get in the habit of whenever you open a new blank document to go to File, Save As. Go to your OneDrive, put it in your ninth grade folder. And if you don't have an Excel folder yet, go ahead and make one. I want you to name it with your first name, underscore, last name, underscore, proj1. Underscores are better to use in files than spaces. So that's why I want you to use underscores. Go ahead and hit save. Now you're back in the workbook. The whole document is called a workbook. The one page is called the worksheet, which you can see down at the bottom. So you sheet one, you can make a whole bunch of pages. A column is labeled with letters, a row is labeled with numbers, and the intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. In between the columns and the rows is a select all box, and they call it that because it selects the entire document. So we're going to go into cell A1, and we're going to type Visitation Academy. In row two, in A2, I know it runs over, don't worry about it, but in A2, we're going to type in ninth grade class. Now you'll notice that I spelled it wrong, but it doesn't tell me that. So in Word, it auto corrects for you. In Excel, it will not. So what you can do is be very cautious when you're typing or under review, you can hit the spelling button and it'll ask you if you want to start from the beginning of the sheet and it'll give you an idea of what you actually want to type. Then you can change and it'll actually solve it for you. Now you'll notice that when you have an active cell like A2, you can either type in the cell itself or you have a formula bar up top that you can type in as well. So what I want you to do in cell A4 is type whatever class you have during period one and then fill the rest of them down through your period one through eight classes. So we'll end up looking something like this. You'll notice that not all of my classes fit easily into column A. I want you to ignore rows one and two. We'll deal with those later. But for now, make column A a little bit wider to fit all of your class names. Now, what I'm gonna have you do is in B3, I'm gonna have you type in class number. So that way you'll, you're gonna be able to remember your classes in order. So type a one in B4, because that should be your first class. Right now, you see the cursor is blinking inside of it. We want the cell to remain active, but we no longer want to type in it. So there's a couple of ways to do that. You can press enter on the keyboard and then click back into it. Or if you're already in there, you can hit the check mark right here on next to the formula bar. These should be going in order from one through eight. One of the cool things you could do in Excel is when you select cells, you want it to be this white plus sign. When you want to elongate cells, you want it to be this bar with the arrows next to it. When you want to use the fill handle, you want to go to the bottom right corner and you see how it turns into this dark, bold plus sign. You can fill down. Now mine keeps saying one, but if you change the options, you can go to fill series and it will figure out that you want to go from one to eight. Fill handle you can use with anything. So like if you want to sort by days of the week. You can sort and you see how it automatically filters down. It's easy to do. Now class number doesn't fit in here so you can either widen it or because this also is two word you can wrap text. So it's right here under alignment on the home ribbon and it says wrap text right here. So if you hit wrap text it will wrap it and then I want to center and center just because I think it looks a little better. In the next column, I want you to type in assignments, and then you're going to put in the number of assignments you have for each class. For our intents and purposes, you can kind of make these up. These are the numbers I chose. These would just be the assignments that you have this week. And in D3, put in your grade in the class. Again, you can just make up this number. Come down into row 12 and type total in cell A12. We're going to calculate some totals. So you may want to know how many assignments you've had to do this week. 
So you can add all these together by cell reference. So each one of these, so the first one for computer science is in cell C4. This is cell C9. So you can add them all together by clicking on each cell and typing a plus in between. This doesn't really make sense for things in a row like this, but if you had things throughout your document, you could use it. The easiest thing I think to do is to use a formula, and this one is called sum because you're calculating the sum. It says right here it adds all the numbers in a range of cells. So if you double click sum, you can select all of your assignments, close the parentheses, and press enter. For your grade, having a total number of grades doesn't really make sense. More of what you're going to want is an average. So if you start typing in average, it'll come up. The first one returns the average of its arguments. So double click. We're going to run the average of all of your grades. Close the parentheses and press enter. So a 91.5 would actually round up to a 92. So if you look up under number, there's a bunch of different formats. So we'll use dollar signs, percentages, comma style. But there's also these decimals. So what we want to do is actually decrease the decimal because you want a whole number grade. So that's your total now. So let's look at our formatting because these first two rows are starting to really bother me because they don't look very nice. So what I want you to do is click in cell A1 with the white plus showing, click and drag all the way to D1. And up in the middle under alignment, there's a button called merge and center. So go ahead and click it and do the same with A2 through D2. So merge and center. While you're in A1, what I want you to do is under styles on your home ribbon, go to cell styles and you can pick whatever color you like as the background. All right, you can also do that from right here. So you can pick the different colors under the paint bucket if you don't find a color that floats your boat. Once you've picked a color, Go back under cell styles and we're going to choose the title style. It's under titles and headings. With A2, do the same thing. Change the color to whatever color you like and then change the cell style to the heading one style. Now I can't really read that so I'm also going to change my font color. Take note now, any Excel document that you turn into me cannot just be in black and white. It has to have some sort of color variety, but it also has to be readable. So don't be picking the crazy colors without changing the font text, all right? Also going to change the format of our titles. So what I want you to do is select B3 through D3, and then on your keyboard, if you press and hold Control, you can then select A4 through A12. I want those to be in the heading four style. For our total row down here in row 12, I want you to select the word total and all the totals that we have, so the whole four cells. Go to cell styles and pick the total style, and it makes it pop just a little bit more. If you don't particularly care for the way that your table looks, go to page layout, and you can go to themes, and you can see all the different theme styles. I'm gonna pick this one because I seem to like it a little better. If you have it in a little while, click save. Now we're going to represent some of our information graphically. So what I want to do is I want to know via visuals how much assignments that you have per class. So what I want you to do is select A4 through A11 because you never want a totals in a graph unless it's only a graph of totals. And you want to press and hold control while you select the assignments for each class. On the insert ribbon, there's a button called recommended charts, which if you're not sure what kind of chart to use is a great place to start. So if you go to recommended charts, you can see the different types of charts available. To me, this clustered bar chart actually looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. You can actually change the picture of it. So if you think that's very boring to look at, under chart styles, which should be new. Now, if you're in the middle of a so cell that's not the chart, you don't get chart options. When you click on the chart, chart design and format both show up. You can actually go into chart styles and pick a chart that you like better, that you think looks better. 
And you could even change the color if you're not a big fan of the color that popped up for you. I don't really like the look of the chart as is, so I'm going to move it up a little bit and then I'm going to expand it. So that way it takes up a little more space. Now chart title is not a super great chart title because it doesn't really tell you what's in the chart. Now if you double clicked it like I just did, it'll ask you to format it. But you just want to make sure you see that blinking cursor in there and let's rename the chart. There we go. When you click on the chart, if you double click on it, it'll pop up with different options or it, sometimes it'll pop up with these three buttons on the side. Um, this is chart style, so it'll actually show you what we just looked at. Hit the plus button, you can actually change the different options, which we'll go over later in the class. And the last option is actually changing the value names, so you can make sure that everything looks correct. Now, for me, it doesn't really make sense to have a half of an assignment, right? So if you click on your chart and you hit the plus button, we're going to change the axis. So hit this arrow next to the axis and go to more options. It should say format axis right here. The minimum will keep it zero. The maximum will put to five. And the major units is what they're graphing by. So if we change that to one, it'll change all of our units to one. So we should be able to close our format axis and be able to see this. There it goes. All right, so to finish up, go to File and go to Print. We're not actually going to print, but we kind of want to see what it looks like. Now, I just have the chart selected, so I have to go back, deselect the chart, go to File and Print again, and make sure we can see everything. So it does spread this out over two pages, which I don't really like. So we're going to take our chart, we're going to move it down below our data. Go back to File, go to Print, see what it looks like. And it doesn't look terrible, but it bet it could look better. So if we go back, we can resize, and now that we've been printing, you can see these dotted lines that will tell you where the print is going to be. So if we shrink the chart, it should fit. And to make this look a little better, if you go to Page Layout, Margins, Custom Margins, we can center on the page horizontally, which means side to side. You can also do vertically, which will put it right in the middle of the page, but we'll just center it side to side. So if you go to File, Print again, it looks a little better. To finish up, go to Insert, and on the right side go to Text and Header and Footer. It automatically places you in the header, so click Go to Footer. In the left side of the footer, we're going to put the file name, and the easiest way to do that is by clicking the button that says File Name. In the center, you're going to put sheet name. And on the right side, you're going to just type in your name. Now this is the print view. You want to return to normal view. So scroll up, click in one of the regular cells, and down the right side, you see there's the zoom range. Right now we're in page layout. We want to go back to normal view. So click the normal view button. If you look, we're in 042 so that there's a couple easy ways to get there. You can type A1 right here and press enter and it'll bring you back to the beginning. On your keyboard, you can type control and home. Home is two buttons away from your delete button and it'll bring you right back up to the top. If you have it in a while, save this and you're going to double check that it has the right name. Do not turn anything into me that says book one and turn it into portal.